Mark Perrone is the international president of the United Food and Commercial Workers International Union with us live tonight. Sir, it's good to have you with us as we talk about what really are the unsung heroes of this crisis, the silent ones, if you will. We walk into the store, the shelves are stocked with the products we need. How are your workers doing tonight? Well, Scott, I think that all grocery workers, whether or not they're union or non-union, are frightened, and I think they're scared uh, because of the unknown, and they feel vulnerable. They feel vulnerable because they don't have the personal protection equipment that they need. Uh, we do have sanitizers in the, in the stands, and we now have plexiglass shields, um, but there still is a shortage on masks. And as we heard earlier on your show, there's certainly a shortage on testing and rapid testing, uh, which you know our members are very concerned about because they're in the stores. They don't want to pass the disease along to somebody else. Uh, they also don't necessarily want to pass it along to their coworkers. What about the issue of hazard pay, things like that, sick leave, <laughs> things that workers need who may be in your industry and aren't getting the help that they need? Well, I think that what we have to look at is whether or not those workers at some point in time might be out on, on an extended uh, sick leave. And I think that hazard pay helps them prepare for that. But let's talk about it in the terms of, say, business. When you do something and it has higher risk, you get paid more. And quite frankly, under the circumstances, uh, the sales per man hour are up in these stores quite a bit. Uh, the sales are up extremely uh, high at this point in time. And our members do feel like, as well as I'm sure the, the workers at those non-union facilities feel as though that they should take some, some portion of that for themselves because they're taking all the risk at this point in time. To be clear, there are some states that consider your workers to be so-called first responders, and they do give benefits as such to some of your workers, correct? That is correct. We have worked very diligently trying to work with state and even county governments in order to do that for the following reason. It gives them access to faster testing and quicker test results. Uh, it also makes some child care available if, in fact, they qualify within that tier. Uh, in addition to that, there's a possibility that they get access to health care a little bit easier. I'm looking at the states that qualify here for that. Michigan, Minnesota, Vermont, and Massachusetts. Sir, that's not many. No, not at this point in time it's not, but we're working in California, uh, we're working in Texas, uh, we're working in New Jersey, Massachusetts, uh, and throughout uh, the Midwest. But I do think that we are going to be successful in several states, and I think that we'll start to see that as we continue our work forward. We're going to work on behalf of all those workers. It doesn't matter whether or not they're union or they're not union. We're going to try to make sure that happens for all these workers in grocery and and quite honestly, in the uh, food manufacturing sector, because we're extremely concerned about that as well. Uh, because if, in fact, our food supply gets cut off in some way, shape, form, or fashion because a large number of our, our members or the workers becoming sick, I think we will have a problem within our society. I mean, the fabric of our society is the fact that we're able to feed and clothe everybody. If we can't do that, uh, I'm afraid that there will be some panic that might set in.